Welcome back everyone. I hope you're having a good day today. We're going to be in Life of Fred, Australia. If you have an Australia book, go ahead and get your book out now. Remember, you can press pause at any time during this video. Today, we're going to be on page 91, chapter 14, and the title is Lost. After the cleaning crew removed the sign, Fred ran into the restroom, turned on the faucet, and put his head under the water. He washed off the shredded paper napkin. That felt good. The slushy and paper napkin had been starting to itch. He dried his head with a paper towel. The paper towel did not stick to his head because he had washed off the sticky slushy. As he left the restroom, he saw a map of the Los Angeles International Airport on the wall. It wasn't exactly clear how to get to the airline that would take Fred to Australia. This is called an understatement. The plain truth was that Fred had no idea where to head. All he knew was that he had two hours to switch from his plane from Kansas to the plane that would take him to Australia. Plane and plane are homonyms. The Los Angeles International Airport is the sixth busiest airport in the world. It is big. Fred had two choices. He could go and ask someone for directions or he could sit down on the floor and cry. When you are five years old, three feet tall, weigh 37 pounds, have no luggage and only $7, are alone in a huge airport and are totally lost, the only logical thing to do would be to sit on the floor and cry. Fred was logical. Are you lost, little fellow? A woman asked. I have three grandchildren that are your age. Fred pointed to the map. He knew that he wasn't lost. The map told him where he was. He just didn't know where anything else was. Where are your parents? She asked. Fred said, it's been over four years since I've seen them. He was telling the truth, but the grandmother thought he was exaggerating. An airport security officer walked by. The grandmother called to him. Could you help us? Fred liked the way she asked the question. She could have said, could you help this poor little lost boy? Fred showed him his airline ticket. The officer took his hand and the pair walked to the correct airline gate. The sign read, boarding in 20 minutes for Sydney, Australia. Fred felt relieved. He was in the right spot. He knew that there was no direct flight from Los Angeles to the Wagga Wagga Airport. His whole trip would be Kittens University, Wichita, Kansas, Los Angeles, California, Sydney, Australia, Wagga Wagga, Australia. Fred thanked the officer. It was late Sunday night. He needed to get to Wagga Wagga by Tuesday. He was right on schedule. There was a big map of Australia on the wall. From a distance, Fred couldn't see Wagga Wagga. He walked up closer to the map. He knew that Wagga Wagga was in the southeastern part of Australia. There it was. It was halfway between Melbourne and Sydney. Wagga Wagga is a large inland city in Australia. Fred was eager to begin teaching there. He remembered that the board chairman, Jennifer Glory, had written, We have a great need for an experienced teacher such as you for the summer. The quotation marks that come at the end of a quotation are called close quotes. Periods and commas go to the left of close quotes. I was thinking, Sam said, of buying a new car. Okay, are you ready for your turn to play? Go ahead and get a sheet of paper and a pencil. Remember, you can press pause at any time. Let's begin. Number one, write a homonym for each of these words. Mary, will you marry me? Bear. I saw a bear at the zoo. Rode. I rode the horse. Number two. Add commas and or periods. I'm thirsty, she said. She said green is good. And the monkey did a little dance. Okay. Here are your answers. Go ahead and check your work. Now, 
Are you ready for today's homeschooling meme? Here you go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that one. Join me here tomorrow for chapter 15. Bye for now.